Fertilizer prices have hit record highs, driven by supply shortages caused by the Ukraine-Russia war, along with a host of pre-existing factors. It's a challenge for all of U.S. agriculture right now. For farmers who are just walking in to buy fertilizer today, they're twice as expensive as they would have been last August, close to three times as costly as they would have been in early 2021. Fertilizer is typically among farmers' biggest expenses each year and the rising costs are creating cascading impacts for farmer incomes, crop yields, and food prices. Broadly speaking, that is a big concern for food production. And if other parts of the world can't get their fertilizer in, then it becomes what some CEOs have warned as a global food crisis. So what's driving these surging fertilizer prices? And what does that mean for farmers and your grocery bills? Like many products and services during the pandemic, fertilizer prices have been impacted by global supply chain challenges. There's a lot of elements that go into manufacturing fertilizer and how it's produced. It requires different ingredients and natural gas from all different parts of the world. If one of those things is disrupted, it throws off the entire supply chain for how fertilizer is produced. There are several key factors behind the global fertilizer supply crunch driving high prices. First, various trade restrictions in 2021 led to a steep drop-off in fertilizer exports. In December, the U.S. and European Union imposed sanctions on Belarus. This halted exports of potash, a key ingredient in mineral fertilizers. Belarus is the world's third largest potash provider. Meanwhile, trade restrictions from China, Turkey, Egypt, and Russia led to reduced fertilizer exports in the second half of 2021. China banned phosphate exports in 2021 when a country like China cuts off its exports that sends prices all over the world up. In February, economic fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine further compounded the strain on fertilizer production. Russia is the world's largest fertilizer exporter, providing around 15% of the world's nitrogen-based fertilizers and 17% of the global potash supply. The West's financial sanctions against Moscow, combined with transportation challenges linked to the war, led to a sharp decline in Russian exports. If you are going to export out of Russia, the insurance on vessels is very expensive. That keeps people from getting fertilizers out. At the same time, rising natural gas prices have prompted some European factories to scale back fertilizer production. Natural gas is another major Russian export and a key ingredient in making nitrogen-based fertilizer. Fertilizer is about three to four times costlier now than in 2020, and farmers around the world are feeling the pinch. High fertilizer prices has affected really the flow of, of how our operation does business, and really it comes down to timing and how much risk does the retailer take, how much risk does the farmer take. Grant Wells is a third-generation corn and soybean farmer in Fonda, Iowa. He's also the CEO and owner of Wells Ag Supply an agriculture retail business. When the Russian war hit in, in February is really when things started going wild, is when things started doubling, tripling. And so it's really gonna affect what the decision making and, and what farmer's profitability is gonna be in 2023. Higher fertilizer prices translate into higher production costs for farmers who already operate on tight profit margins. It's also leading to delays in farmers' planting schedules, which could create supply chain snags as crops are harvested later in the season. Most farmers I see delaying that decision-making process to later in the season. You know, instead of maybe November, December, they're probably going to sit on their hands and wait till Jan, Feb, March, hoping for some sort of a price reduction. And if that doesn't happen, then they'll choose to decide, you know, how much can get cut back. Applying less fertilizer could also lead to lower crop yields. While some U.S. farmers plan to cut back on their overall fertilizer use, others are shifting their acres toward less fertilizer-intensive crops. Soybeans, for instance, don't require as much nitrogen-based fertilizer. So it's a, usually a battle in Iowa or in the Midwest between corn and soybeans. And so farmers will look at alternatives to corn. Corn is a lot more dominating on the fertility needs. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the net income for farmers reached around $119 billion in fiscal year 2021, the highest in eight years. But higher fertilizer prices and other rising costs, such as herbicides, are squeezing their profit margins. That means grocery bills could go up even more in 2022, following a year in which global food prices rose to decade highs.
It appears that food costs are high and farmers are benefiting, but that is not the case. Profit margins are the same. Consumers are just unfortunately having to pay more uh, to put food on their own table. Higher corn and soybean prices, for example, raise the cost of animal feed for meat companies, which pass along the increase to consumers. And I think the worst case scenario is that uh, we don't have fertilizer at all to apply to the crops. And then that becomes a feed and food production issue. If we don't produce the crops, we can't probably produce the livestock and the poultry, and we get into actual food challenges in the U.S. And that would be a much, much greater concern than what we have today. Meanwhile, some U.S. farmers are looking at commercial fertilizer alternatives. Biologicals, for instance, are natural fertilizers containing microorganisms that enhance soil fertility. The high prices are forcing us to look at alternative ways to how we've applied fertilizer to be more precise and you know, to look at alternatives like what a biological could do. But switching to biologicals or trying new techniques may carry risks for farmers who rely on consistent crop yields to make a profit. If they try something different one year, and their yields are down, crop doesn't come in like they want, then like that's it for the year. That is their income. They need it to work. They can't really take the risk. As fertilizer prices continue to rise, the agriculture industry braces for the long-term impacts on food production. You know, the solutions are very difficult to this because it, it comes down to uh, oil production, natural gas supplies. I think there's a very good chance that Fertilizer costs could continue to increase, and we could go into the 2023 crop year with even higher fertilizer costs than what we've had in 2022. 